Yo guys, welcome back to the channel, this is your boy Bashiro, um, this is my first DNF dual character guide, I'll be making much more of this actually, for I hopefully I can cover the whole cast. So in this video I want to talk about Enchantress, which is a character that I've decided to play as my main character. I was planning to play Dragon Knight, but to be honest, I feel like Dragon Knight is a little bit too simplistic for me right now, and I want to start with a character that's actually a little bit more complicated. So, what did I pick up Enchantress? Uh, she has a very high learning curve. And she's a character that, in my opinion, because she's difficult now, so she might seem weak, but later on, the more people figure her out. And with the worth of options she has, she's a very strong character, and she's really scary, and I feel like she will really rise up, like, the more that the game develops. So in this video, this is just starter guide. This is just basically to help you, like, pick up the character. We'll not be talking about, like, high-level technical stuff. This is, like, what you need to know. So you can actually start playing the character, and you can start to do your own thing, and you can actually start playing the character properly. So we'll talk about the normals, the specials, the teddy bear, and some two really essential techniques that you should definitely learn if you want to like pick up this character now. Okay guys, so if you enjoyed this content, leave a like below, subscribe if you haven't done already, and let's begin. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the character archetype of uh, Enchantress. Enchantress, at a first glance, she might seem like she's a puppet character, because she has a teddy bear and she has like two sets of different like special moves. Or MP skills depend really on what kind of uh, like stance you are in. But for me, that the way I see Enchantress, she's like a, a versatile character with like some really strong zoning, like long range zoning stuff. She has good setups, and she's a character that can really abuse some of the system mechanics. She can steal MP from the opponent. She has a strong pot at the command grab that basically lets your opponent unable to block afterwards. So she has a lot of different like varied set of tools, and she can really play. Like the way that she wants. Her normals, I feel like she, they're not really the best, but you can't have everything in a character. Uh, what's strong about uh, Enchantress overall? The options, uh, like the strong pressure when she gets in closely, she can really abuse some of the system mechanics uh, for, for this character actually. And she's a character that actually has low hitboxes. So she's a character that she can avoid like a lot of fuzzy stuff and those silly things. You can never really underestimate those kind of things. But in my opinion, uh, Enchantress has like uh, three main weaknesses in my opinion. Number one, she has really low health compared to other characters. I feel like she has maybe, I think, the lowest health. And in a game like the NF Duel where damage is high, she can really die much more quickly than other characters. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, she's a character that like, has a really high learning curve. So it means that she's not a character that you can pick up and you can start to do things with her immediately. You have to be patient until you can actually start to play her more effectively. And the third thing, actually, I feel like compared to other characters, she doesn't really have the highest damage compared to like um, like a Crusader or um, like a Troubleshooter or these characters, you know, with a really insane high damage. So that's something to keep in mind. But I feel like her having high damage with her options would be too stupid. In a game that's already super stupid. So let's start talking about a little bit her normals. So the first normal actually is 5A. It is an okay normal. It doesn't have really the best range. And it can lead into 5AA. The first one is minus 3 on block and the other one is minus 5. And it's uh, like a normal pop, but I don't think it's really like a good pop compared to other characters. The other really great normal that you need to use more often is 2A. 2A basically it's like a 6 frame startup which is really quick, but it's minus 10 on block. But the nice thing about it great range as you can see so basically you can get from this range and it can confirm into a 5b which is really really great the other normal is also 5b it's 10 frame startup which is fast minus 10 on block and it actually pushes enchantress like really in front this button it's a great whiff punish tool because in some distances where you cannot really reach your opponent you can actually just punish them with that and you can go into a 2b accordingly 2B, it's a 2 hit move, it's a 15 frame startup, it's a bit on the slow side and it's minus 12, so it's not really the safest of moves. For me, it's a good button, but it has one really, really uh, like glaring flaw. The first hit is a mid, the second hit is the low. It means that your opponent, if you're trying to use it like in a pressure scenario, it's really actually a uh, little bit risky. But what you can do actually with it, which we'll explain later, you can do something like that, or you can actually just continue the whole thing with the, with the puppet afterwards. So that's something just to keep in mind. 5S, which is basically her skill button. Uh, the first one is 15 frame startup, it's really minus, but the thing is it sends 
like three thrones. No, actually, it sends thrones across the whole screen, and if it hits the opponent, it will continue afterwards. The nice thing about this move is, even though you cannot really cancel it into other stuff, other like uh, other than like MP skills, what you can do with it actually is you can use it in some corner carry combos. So if you do something like that. You can go for like really really long combos afterwards so it has really excellent uh, carry and the nice thing about it also is you can push the opponent after it like in some pressure scenarios so you can actually set up your doll actually let me just put the guard shuffle not guard shuffle yeah guard shuffle okay so you can actually start like your puppet pressure accordingly so that's actually a really good pop in my opinion the second one i want to talk about actually is Two skill. Two skill is basically your normal launcher in this game. It has really high, like, <laughs> really nice hitbox, actually, as you can see. And you can actually start a lot of combos with it. So if you do, like, uh, puppet cancels, we'll talk about puppet cancels later. Six skill is a projectile that you can charge. And as you can see, it has a really nice hitbox and travels full screen, and you can charge it. So the, for me, this is like a really, really nice poking tool. Two skill. Basically, it sends like a puppet below. When on hit, it's like minus seven on block one. Uh, like your opponent tries to block it, but you can use it in like some okay scenarios where you can actually just keep your turn afterwards. So if you do something like that and you time it properly, you can actually go like for a high low mix up. There is more advanced ways that you can use it actually. So I feel like this is really a versatile tool. It's not something that you throw in neutral because it takes a long time actually to recover. So it's something that you need to use on knockdown and i don't think it travels the whole screen oh no actually it travels the whole screen this is stupid actually yeah so let's talk a little bit also now about her mp skills so for a character like enchantress she has two sets of uh, mp skills the first mp skills are basically when the teddy bear is not really summoned so basically you have a front mp skill this is travels like really crazy range it costs like 60 mp but it recovers 40 MP and sees exactly 40 MP from your opponent. And it doesn't really matter if you use it like in a combo scenario. It will always sell the same amount. So that's something to keep in mind. And it actually has really, really nice hits. So even if you time it properly, as you can see, you can steal like MP from your opponent. The second one actually is 2, two MP, a uh, 2 M. Basically 2 MP is like an explosion that's like a reversal. It pulls the opponent forward and it really has like a really nice hitbox. Something to keep in mind. The third MP skill is the command grab. The command grab, even though it costs a lot, it puts your opponent like in a state where they cannot really block and they can only use like one attack. And this is really, I feel like this is really stupid. The thing is that it has a, like a lot of uh, like startup frames and the recovery is really huge and it costs a lot of MP. So it's something that you have to set up to actually get it like properly. So if you press the MP button neutral, you activate the puppet, which is the teddy bear. This activation costs 10 MP, and it allows you to control the teddy bear separately. If you press the guard button, you can actually control the teddy bear. You can put him behind the opponent, and you can start to do stuff. So, for example, something like that, and you can go for combos afterwards. For the teddy bear, he has three sets of special moves. So, front MP is like a two swipe. This is good for pressure. You have the two MP. This does like an OTG so basically you can continue to hit after the ground and it has a really really large hitbox so if you do something like that let's just let the teddy bear come here so if you do this as you can see it really like it really hits like even from the highest point of the launcher and it's used for some combos and for some okay and the final one which is really expensive is the two MP skill it shoots like a firewall it's good for combos and it's good for pressure scenarios actually so these are basically our her special moves. Her jumping attacks, they're okay. Jump A for some characters that are like really large can be used as an instant overhead. Jumping B is really good actually because it hits really far. And you can do some stuff that I will show you later on when you how you control the puppet. So if you do something like that, you can continue for something afterwards. Jump A skill is the charging fireball as well. And if you jump and you press M, you can control the puppet. This is really important later on, and I will explain to you what you can do actually with those ones. So for Enchantress's uh, awakening skill, basically when you control the puppet, like the MP consumption will be less for special moves. It's a little bit risky because 
in a game where like you need to maintain your HP, it's uh, I will see later how effective it can be actually for her. And her special super move, which is basically like her awakening skill, is something like that has poor range compared to other characters, but she, it has like the minimum scaling. And it's to be honest, it's a special that looks really cool, in my opinion. I, they really did well, like the design of the characters in this game. So I really like how things look, like with the animations and those things. Now let's talk about the puppet mechanic for her, which is like the mad the teddy bear. So if you press the MP button, you activate the teddy bear. The teddy bear moves along with her, and it really depends. Like even if you're pressing a direction, like in the middle of a head, the teddy bear will move. This is one of the things that might seem make like her like a little bit uh, complicated to use. But you have to understand something that once you summon, let's say for example, we we'll push the teddy bear here, and you unsummon, and you summon again, the teddy bear will still retain its place. However, if you do it from the ground, or like from the air, sorry the teddy bear will come out to wherever you are. So that's something to keep in mind. You can control the bear separately, even if you are guarding, so you can put him behind the opponent, so you can do something like that. Something like that. Uh, it, she doesn't feel like, like a real puppet character because she cannot do things like in conjunction, like with the teddy bear. So for example, if I do this, I summon the bear and... If I do this, for example, so... It doesn't feel like she's attacking at the same time with the bear, so... This makes her like not feel like like a true puppet character, but still the puppet has a lot of uses. So let's talk about two techniques that you need to learn as a enchantress player. This is really important, guys. Number one, you have to understand something called uh, color canceling. So color canceling is like a universal mechanic in this game, and it basically allows you like to cancel one move into another special move. So for example, uh, let's say for example you do like five M. You can cancel this into command grab. The input is a bit tight, but this allows you actually to have more range on your command grab. So let's say for example that I'm trying to do the command grab from here. As you can see, the range is not really great. But if you do the cara cancel, but it's something that you can master, as you can see, you can gain more uh, distance. So what does that actually mean? It means that for a character like uh, Enchantress, since her 5 arm pushes her really front, it allows you to extend the range of the command grab. So this is the normal range, and this is the command grab range. As you can see, it pushes her a bit forward. That's number one. Number two, you have to learn what we call Madu cancels. So, for a character like Enchantress, when she presses the summon, even though that, like, the summoning, which is called Showtime, costs 10 MP. But when you unsummon, it doesn't cost anything. But the thing is that when you summon and unsummon, it allows you to, like, to cancel the recovery of some attacks. So, something like that. So, let me give you an example. So, if you do this, under normal circumstances, you cannot continue. But if you do this, as you can see, you can continue the combo afterwards. So that's something really, really important that you need to learn about. So what does that, like, what's the benefit of this one? It allows her to, like, extend her pressure in some scenarios where other characters cannot, because in this game, you do, like, attack, 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 special into an MP skill, etc. For her, she doesn't really need to abide by those rules. So as long as you have 10 MP, you can basically cancel those things. So how does that work in combo? So for example, something simple as that. As you can see, so it allows you to go for more creative combos, even in the corner, or even like for some corner carry combos, you can utilize this. So if you do something like that, As you can see, this allows you to do more combos more effectively. This is really, really important. The second technique that you need to learn about is something that we call blinking. It's basically when you press two buttons in succession, like really, really quick after each other. As you can see, the input there on the left, like I jump and I press skill, then skill and MP skill at the same time. Like that in, in succession. So I jump, skill, jump and MP skill almost immediately. Why is this important for her? Because if you jump and you press skill, it presses like does the fireball thingy. But as you can see, you will be stuck wherever she's trying to jump and the recovery is really huge. So this doesn't really allow you to do like some really tricky high-low mix-up. If you jump, you have to wait until you recover, until you do like a jumping A or a jumping B or whatever. And for some characters, it doesn't really hit. So if you jump and you does this, as you can see, you can cancel the recovery of jumping S. It's a bit tricky, but it's really important to know. So what does that allow you to do? Something like that, instant overhead. Or you can do this into low. 
of this and took it out. So <laughs> now this is why I picked this character. So let's talk a little bit about what kind of okay you can do with a character like uh, Enchantress. So in my opinion right now, like the first two okies that you need to learn about is number one, if you don't have mud uh, summoned, is basically uh, two skill. It's the timing is a bit tricky, but it's like a one hit. And I feel like if you time it properly, you can sneak like on the recovery of the opponent, like as a meaty, either a high or a low, depending like on the height of the character you're fighting. So it's a really good OK move. So if you do something as simple as that, and let me show you an example. So it allows you like just to approach the opponent and like try to sneak an, uh, an attack accordingly. If you delay it, you can time it like to the wake up of the opponent. If you have mud summoned, which is, I feel like in my opinion, it's easy. There is two types of okay you can go for. First one, this one, which is basically on wake up, or the other one, which is this one. But I feel like okay with mud, uh, it's a little bit tricky. What you can do is basically you can set up, then you can approach. Then you can use mud accordingly. But the thing is, the problem with uh, like mud, which is the teddy bear, is if you try to move back, he will move back with you. So you have to keep like your forward momentum uh, when you're trying to use him. I feel like I still need a little bit more time to like to explore like her OK options. But I'm to be honest, I'm having little bit like very limited time <laughs> with the game right now, especially what's been going on like uh, in my personal life. So that's something you know, I just wanted to consider, guys. Uh, finally, when you're playing mud and you're trying to do some of the combos, uh, just keep in mind that the teddy bear will keep the momentum with you. So if you're doing like a combo, something like that, you have to keep pressing forward so the teddy bear will move forward. So if you're doing this combo, as you can see, and you're trying to do something like that, the bear will move back with you. So that's just something to keep in mind. So. I think like the bear is wearing like a face mask. <laughs> I just noticed this one. Uh, for her combos, I feel like uh, when you first start like starting to learn the characters, there's like two combo parts that you need to learn about. The first one, which is basically the mat cancels, is what you do is like for example like 5B. Then you can continue the combo afterwards, so something like that. So you can do something like that simple, or you can do something more complicated like that, L like that for example. Or the other combo thing that you can do basically is this one. Or if you don't want to do like really complicated combos, you can go for something like this. Or something as simple as that. And it's just you can start learning the character, so... Uh, that's it for this video. I just want to spend more time like playing and learning the character because I feel like there's a lot of things that you can do with the Enchantress and I feel like she's a character that's really fun and strong in this like in this game. It's just something that she needs like a little bit time to figuring her out. So alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what do you think about Enchantress in the comments below and let me know what kind of characters you want me to cover first in this game. And I'll try to explore the game more just to explain like the system mechanics and like more advanced stuff later down the line. So thank you for watching guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.